Austru, Austru, dragă trăguță, Mi-ai cerut ciora cu panglicuță, Și-ai mai vrea, și-ai mai vrea, și-ai mai vrea la tale, Să-ți cumpere neica și sandale. Hello to everybody that's watching this real story with my friend Rabbi Haim Asa from Burgas. To me, he's a citizen of the world. And today is May 29th, 2013, a beautiful Tuesday afternoon in sunny... Wednesday. Oh, sorry, it's not Tuesday. It's Wednesday uh, afternoon in sunny Fullerton, California, which is part of Orange County. Rabbi Asa is going to tell us a great story about his three years, extraordinary, tumultuous, adventurous, risky years in Argentina, South America. Rabbi Asa. Thank you, David. I would like to discuss with you today what it takes to bring modern version of an ancient religion to the young people of foreign country. And let me preface it by saying that Jews have been living in Argentina since the 1860s, 1870s. As a matter of fact, uh, Baron uh, Edmund Rothschild in the beginning of the, the end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century, realized how miserable the Jews of Russia uh, were uh, living literally uh, like paupers, like paupers, which they were, bought land in Argentina, which Argentina is very large, so in, in terms of, uh, of uh, California, it will be like uh, 10 counties of California, if you take San Diego and and some, you know, so that's basically and in Southern California. Yeah, and uh, Los Angeles and Ventura counties. He bought that land and he decided that he's going to, at his own expense, purchase, he didn't have to purchase, he owned railroads, he owned uh, ships, that he's going to load up the ships in Russia, in, in the ports of, uh, of uh, Russia, and bring them to Argentina for new life. For new life. It will make them farmers, it will make them um, productive, Business rather people, than yes. being just, uh, you know, nothing. Nothing. Surfs. So, his experiment worked for a while, but the next generation of Jews who came to, to, to Argentina, uh, Argentina uh, to the uh, lands that he had uh, purchased, went to the university in Buenos Aires and never came back to the farmland. I understand. So, uh, the most famous of those villages is Moisesville. Moisesville is a village called Moisesville? Yeah, Moisesville. Because this was, I think, the Hebrew name of uh, Baron H. Rothschild. So, Moisesville was in honor of, of Baron Rothschild. Yeah, or one of his relatives or children, whatever. Anyway, so, there have been Jews in Argentina, let's say, for the last um, 160, 170 years, but the Judaism they brought with them from Europe was stagnant, was the same. Let me make a comparison with the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church in the 1960s in Argentina really modernized itself and created, uh, let's say, the most famous of all the creations was Missa Criosia. So it was Argentinian mass with music, with uh, all the instruments you, 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 you could think of. And it was a very lively, lively yeah. very energetic. energetic. And, uh, you as a musician, as a professor of music, uh, should know that um, th this makes a big difference. Yeah, it attracted people yeah. in a natural way so rather than the the synagogue. I was uh, I went to help at the beginning was German Jewish congregation, refugees from Hitler Germany before the war. They got out in thirty three, four, five, six, seven. 
probably the last Jews that came there was in 1938. And they continued with the same dubbing, the same worship, uh, totally dry and arid. Dry and arid. And I wanted something different. And fortunately, the World Union for Progressive Judaism gave me the permission to start a new congregation and gave me the timing of one year. They said, if you don't do it in one year, you're finished. It's and don't come back to America because nobody would talk, even to, you. talk to you or help you. It's a nice I encouragement. Said, yeah, nice encouragement. So, Good in August of 1964, which was exactly one year after we arrived there, we came there in 63, uh, just before the holidays, I established the Congregación Emanuel de Buenos Aires. And this congregation was uh, subsidized by Temple Emanuel of New York. Wow. They lent us $100,000, which we... They loaned you? They loaned us. Okay. They loaned us. Uh, and we repaid it. And, and anyway, and you uh, use the money to uh, yeah. promote, to build, yes. to develop yes. we rented We rented a very nice big house, multi-purpose. Downstairs was the sanctuary, upstairs was classrooms with activities for the young people, for the children. We, we were a congregation that was like uh, an American style, active and self-sufficient and, self and, uh, and covered that. everything. Right. And I up to that time, all the synagogues in Buenos Aires were either Ashkenazim, or Sephardi, which is the uh, the Jews from Eastern Europe, Eastern and Western and Europe, Central and Eastern Europe, yeah, yeah, or Sephardi, which was the Jews from let's say North Africa and the Balkans, uh, Bulgaria, uh, Greece, Yugoslavia, Italy, Spain, Italy, yeah, Spain, all along the coast on the Mediterranean. I immediately crossed lines and had Ashkenazim, Sephardim, I had every Jew of every You brought everybody together. Together. Mm -hmm. And of course the language was Spanish. The common language. Yes. The language was Spanish. In the German congregations, there were like uh, four or five of them of the period of 1930s. Uh, the language must have been the Yiddish. Language, the language was German. German. Proper German. Proper German. As a matter of fact, the sermons were in German, and the young kids didn't know German or because they were real. raised in uh, Argentina, Argentina, so their the language uh, was, was very, Spanish. Yeah, it was very, very uh, contrary and very uh, sort of like pushing away the. the young well, they were people. rejecting it to them. It so felt like a my, foreign language. My first achievement when I came to Buenos Aires was to organize young congregation. Uh, for the high holidays, and I, the little Spanish that I knew, uh, I hired somebody, I cut and paste pages from the Magzor, from the prayer books. Magzor is the high holiday prayer book, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and, and I tried to create a text to which the young people could relate. It was Spanish and Hebrew. Right. Or I should say Hebrew and, and Spanish. Spanish. Okay? So uh, those are not the books, of course. Those are in English. Right. English. But, but Hebrew and English. Yeah. But uh, I created uh, uh, this. I also had a summer camp. So came January. January is like our... Summer. Or June, July, you know. Right. Uh, so school ends like around Christmas time, December fifteenth, uh, December twenty. Right. Or second, by by. So you by brought all the kids yeah, to the camp. I took a bus full of young uh, boys and girls. I hired uh, the instructors, the madrechim, as they say in Madrechim. The the counselors, 
camp counselors, and we had a wonderful program. How and many children did you have in the summer uh, program? The first that? program, the first year, it was probably 45, uh, 50 kids. The next year, I had like double, and the last year that I was there, I had probably 200, 220. How many members in the end, in the third year? How much, how large was your congregation uh, by the time you left? The congregation was probably, it started in my backyard in August of 1964, and at that time it was just people totally un not related to each other. Right, just coming to see yeah, what this is about, right. to invite And them. I celebrated Sukkot. Uh, under the stars with a nice uh, sukkah. Sukkah is the festival of Booth, uh, which is celebrated uh, ten days, five days after Yom Kippur. So Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and then Sukkot. So how many members did you have and at the at end? At that time was probably, we started with 30, 40 members. By the time I left was probably 150, 200. That's wonderful. And it still exists today? It still exists today. You know what street it's on in Buenos Aires? Yes. It has merged with Congregacion CNI, which is Congregacion Nacional uh, no, Nueva no. Israelita. So, so two, two congregations, my congregation, merged, Manuel, they merged. and CNI. Congregacion Nacional Israel. Yeah. Uh, merged and became Emmanuel C C N I or whatever it is. You know, uh, it's um, on the street called, I believe, Arcos. Arcos in Arcos. Buenos Aires. Yeah, in, in a nice Aires. neighborhood. Yeah, very so nice. Belgrano. Belgrano is like the the Beverly Hills of uh, Buenos Aires. Belgrano. Yeah, Belgrano. So um, this was a, a, a great adventure, and I'm happy to say that. I was a pioneer. My wife was incredible. She really worked very hard to do that with me, and we succeeded. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much for uh, sharing w with us a, a wonderful story that's not as tragic and as dark as so many of the other stories that you had to live personally through. But uh, the, the amazing thing is that I'm sitting next to a wonderful human being who is still a pioneer even today at the age of 82 which is only the chronological age inside you f he feels like about 20 22 and he acts that way we have a lot of fun <laughs> we're gonna go to Best Buy now to purchase the latest Samsung uh, 4 telephone that has all the new gadgets and Rabbi Asa is excited about that very good. yes he likes it and it's very easy to operate it's not scary so he is very young in spirit, and uh, I think uh, he has a couple of more pioneering uh, projects uh, yeah. uh, up his sleeve that he's going to yeah. share with us. I would like in the next segment to talk about the phone call I received from Elena Poptodorova, the Bulgarian ambassador to Washington, D.C., or to the United States of America at Washington, who, who shared with me uh, something that I'm going to be working on in the next few days on the phone. There you go, another surprise story coming up. Conversation My with pleasure. Ambassador Elena Pop Teodorova from Bulgaria, representing Bulgaria in the United States in Washington, D.C. Can't wait to listen to this story. Thank you very much. Thank you. God bless. Ai mai vreau, și ai mai vrea drăguță, Ana, Ca să te îmbrac, măi, cu o năframă. Să-ți cumpăr, să-ți cumpăr cercei, măi, Ana, Dar eu n-am de unde, măi, cu o dară. Auzi, dragă, fata, nechi, dragă, Aseară, cu o nivă, ta miceană. Și acum nu spărale, să-ți cumpăr sandale, Buzunarele sunt doale ta Mai apoi trecuță Încă o băncuță Și băui în colitruță ta 